Uh, good. Uh, good morning, Deborah. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, you can hear you now. Yes, how is that? I am connected with two devices, maybe that's why. So I had to mute one and then use one as the camera. <laughs> so I hope you can see us. We can see us. Yeah. Yes. Um, Hi. Good. Allow me to greet you in the Ghanaian language. <laughs> I'm listening. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, the students you are seeing here, we are, we are a group of students and lecturers. We are a group of students taking statistics and uh, those interested in statistics. I'm not I'm not Okay, we need to I hope you can see me now. We are a group of students taking statistics and uh, taking mathematics. And we are happy to invite you to our event. Uh, it's a statistics bootcamp where we get to learn more about uh, what happens out there in real life and maybe the applications of whatever we are running in school. So uh, I want to welcome you to introduce yourself uh, before we can start. All right. Can, can you still hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay, yeah. So I'm Deborah Domakan Lobala, and um, I'm a Ghanaian, and I currently lecture with one of the universities here in Ghana called Academic City University. Um, I also work remotely as a natural language processing engineer. Um, I think as part of my presentation, I'll elaborate a bit further as to what I do as an NLP engineer and what it's really about. So I, I think there are more details about myself and my journey in, in the presentation. So I'll probably just um, end here as a bit of introduction. Yeah, nice to meet all of you and um, big ups to El Kana and um, the entire team for organizing this and I'm really privileged to have been invited to actually come and share my experience and journey with all of you and um, I should say that I hope that at least after the entire presentation it wouldn't just be um, just one you come and listen to but one that is going to kick in your interest in the area and maybe push you to um, begin thinking about starting a career in, in this area. Yeah, that's what I can say now. Thank you. Uh, before maybe you can start your presentation, I want to invite the patron of the society yeah. at least to welcome you officially. Okay. Um, I know it's morning at your place, so good morning. Uh, good morning. My name is Thomas Mawara. Um, I'm a friend to Elkana and also I once taught him several courses. So um, I'm really privileged and happy to have you and actually him having introduced us and connected us. I actually look forward to the presentation. Uh, yeah. It may be a fast for some of the persons of the attendees here who are also students. Uh, so we look forward to a very nice uh, presentation. Yeah. And I also have to introduce one extra person to come and say <laughs> hi. <laughs> um, it will be very unfair. In Kenya, we have a rule of one part gender rule. So uh, thankfully, we have uh, a lady also to come and say hi. Uh, she will introduce who she is. Thank you. OK. All right. OK, thank you. <laughs> Hello, Deborah. Hi. My name is Joyce. Hello. Otieno. My name is Joyce Otieno. I work okay, in Joyce. the Department of Statistics with Thomas, and these are my students. Okay. It's nice having you wow. here this, this morning. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. I'm, really, I'm really happy to be here as well. Okay. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Um, I think that's where we can get started. Okay, sure. 
So I'll just share my screen. Deborah, just a minute yep. before you. I hope you are okay. We can record the session. Oh yeah, I'm okay with that. Okay, thank you. She needs to share the screen. She needs to share the screen. Just a minute. So, Bella, we've given her the rights so she can share the screen if she wants. Deborah, if you can share your screen, at least we've given you the rights you can. Okay. Just a minute. Um, it still hosts the stable participant sharing. Um, can you make it multiple participants? You know, I'm connected with two devices. Yes, we might have a small interference that is going to become. She's connected to two. Should I try it again? Just, just a minute, we are trying to ensure everybody can record. I think we'll have to go to the other one. The other person. Uh, so, Deborah, you are the host. So, you're the one who can give your other account the uh, right to share screen. So, I think. Okay. You can give it the right to be the host and then you can share screen with that. I think you made me the host on my phone. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Um, is your recording going to be um, on the cloud or it's going, how did you set it? Is it recording from the computer or cloud? Local machine. Ah, so let's do this. Um, <clears throat> let me make you the host. Just ensure that the share, everyone can share so that you record the video on your local machine because that means it's going to be on mine since I'm the host. So it is recording from a machine. My ma this machine is, Aisha is going to Yes. Aisha is going to be saved there. Yeah, it will be saved there because we've used it a couple of times now. Oh, okay. Then that's okay. Yeah. All right. Okay, so we can we can just start. All right. So once again, good morning. Sorry, good afternoon at your end. Good morning from my side. Um, so Elikana mentioned to me that you had a very um, small association that um, you have students with background statistics and people interested to start career in that area. And he wanted me to come share a bit of my journey and also um, a bit of what the entire field is about and all of that. And so I was really thinking about a good title for the entire talk. And um, the best thing that could come into my head was to title this as diving into a career in machine learning. 
And um, so what I'm going to do in the presentation is that I'm going to um, sort of share a bit of my journey into this area. And um, whilst making this presentation, I'm going to share a few tips as to things that I think really worked out for me. Um, so more like to inspire you as well. And um, I would then focus on talking about what machine learning is about. And if you want to get started in the area of machine learning or AI, I would also touch a bit on um, the opportunities that are available in the area. There are a whole lot, but I'll just touch on a few. And then um, I also touch into how you can launch a career in tech because um, not everyone probably would want to go to do machine learning or anything of that sort. And then I would just conclude all my final words. Um, so I guess the presentation is going to be a bit long, but I'll try to keep it <laughs> a bit short as well. And um, I speak pretty fast. So if at any point in time, things are not clear for you or you don't get something, I'm happy that you can just stop me at any point in time and then ask me questions if you have any. Um, so I'm just going to start giving a brief um, history about my educational ladder. So I started from the University for Development Studies here in Ghana um, in 2006, where I gained, sorry, 2016, where I gained a BSc in financial mathematics. And um, whilst in school, I think one thing that really worked out for me was that I was always um, willing to learn and open to opportunities. And since you are currently under or do your undergraduate programs, you should be open to possibilities, new things, because it's at that level that um, you can sort of get into a multiple things and then just try to identify where your career interest is or what you're really most interested in. So from UDS, I went to the African Institute for Math mathematical science that was in Senegal, where I completed in 2019 with um, an MSc degree in mathematical science. So it was during this program that I got interest, introduced to the area of data science. And uh, I now was interested in seeing how I could create a blend between this data science and then my already degree in financial mathematics. And I noticed that there's a possibility to actually blend these two. And so since my interest was um, spiked there, I felt I was still not prepared entirely and I needed extra knowledge in the area. And so I got admitted to the African uh, Masters in Machine Intelligence program that is also concurrently run in the African Institute for Mathematical Science in Ghana. So more like I came back home and then I started that program purely in machine intelligence. And I would say this program really exposed me to a whole bunch of things. And I'm always grateful for where I am today. I, I owe the success to the background that I've had at AIMS. And then whilst I was in this program, I, I also took um, a master's research in the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. So it was a, a double master's degree I was doing at that time. So the good thing for me was that I was doing it in an area in machine learning and finance. So it's like I was tapping knowledge from my current master's um, program and all, already my existing uh, um, knowledge in the area of financial mathematics. So that's really about my educational ladder. And then um, <clears throat> I then, once I finished the um, um, AIMS Ghana and KUSD, I got a job with Proto. Um, Proto is um, an, an more like a, a tech company, right? And we deal build um, chatbots. So what I mean by chatbots typically are, um, now when you go on tip, um, most websites, you notice that there is a small chat button there where you're able to go and then chat with an existing or an inexisting um, person. You don't know if it's a human being or it's actually a computer that is responding to you. Um, in actual sense, it's a computer responding to you. Um, so typically what we do in Proto is to build these chatbots. And so I work there as an NLP engineer. So what I do in my role as an NLP engineer, so NLP is natural language processing. And typically we are dealing with analyzing text. Right. So, for instance, think about Google Translate. You have lots of data sets that comes in with different, like in a language like English, and you want to translate it to like um, Swahili. Uh, um, I think the good Swahili word I know is I love you. So I love you in Swahili is nakupenda, right? 
<laughs> I love him, so I hate him. He's my offender. So if you want to build a, a model like what exists in the Google Translate, you have to get different sentences in English and then their corresponding um, translations in Swahili. And then you're going to, first of all, now take these texts and then change them to typical vectors because um, what the, the computer does is that it can't understand human text. What it understands is just numbers. So you have to find a way to represent this text as numbers. And when you're representing this text as numbers, we call that embedding. So you're going to now represent them as vectors, which are embeddings, and then you can then pass them into your machine learning model that will be able to learn that if I say I love you in English, in Swahili, it means I am um, Nakopenda, right? So what I do as an NLP engineer, we are dealing with building chatbots. And so um, the last project we work on was that if someone types in a language like, okay, Nakopenda, or middle, which is I love you to in tree. Um, I want to be able to identify that if someone says Nakopenda, this is Swahili. If someone says um, middle, that is tree. So that the chatbot will also be able to respond in the, the, that same language. And so what we call that is language identification. And so um, what we're doing was to come up with a model that will be able to identify languages that people type in. So these are like some of the things that I do as an NLP engineer. And I also, like I mentioned, that I lecture in a Ghanaian university, Academic City University, and I lecture courses in AI and data science. And um, somebody may ask why I'm doing these two things. For me, I think growing up, I noticed that sometimes our lectures are more like theoretical, like from where I come from, like my, my educational level. So you see that lecturers come because they are so theoretical. They come and they explain concepts on the theoretical level. And when you go to the industry, then it becomes a whole different ball game together. And so I felt that being able to combine both industrial and then academia experience, I am not just teaching students just theory, but I'm able to teach them the practical aspects as well. So combining these two jobs have been very like self-fulfilling for me and I've enjoyed it so far and I'm still enjoying it as well. And aside that too, um, I think it's really important that as you grow in your career, you also think about those behind you. So what does it mean? You have to think about how can you impact the society? And like I mentioned at the beginning, um, kudos to Elkana and the entire team for actually organizing something like this. Because when we were in school, sometimes people, the, the alumni really sometimes don't even care. They just continue their education thinking about themselves. But these are these young ones who have gone higher and seen that it's really important to come back home, organize and get people to always speak to um, students who are currently in school so that you can see the numerous opportunities that are available outside there. And so what I do in my little way is that I, I co-organize women in machine learning and data science. And I know there is a chapter in Kenya as well. And so for the, um, ladies among us, if you're interested and you're in Kenya, you can try to search for women in machine learning and data science and then try to join them. They organize meetups from time to time and our chapter is in Ghana here. So we also organize meetups from time to time. And aside that too, I co-founded um, Women Promoting Science to the Younger Generation. And our main motive is that we want to ignite the interest of young girls in, um, in the sciences because we have we have like mathematical background and we notice that all the time you have really few representation of women in this area and so our little way to encourage women was to start up an association like this that can create an enabling environment for everyone to get involved okay so that's just really a bit about my journey and everything and what I've been up to. So like I mentioned, I'm going to touch a bit on what machine learning is about and everything and how to get started in the area. So first of all, when we talk about machine learning, can I know how many of us at least have heard about machine learning? Maybe if you had heard about it, just raise your hand. If you've heard of machine learning somewhere, like the word, you, you don't necessarily have to know it, but you've heard machine learning, data science, artificial intelligence, AI, Okay, so just one person raised the hand. Okay. Okay, I've seen another hand. I've seen another hand. Okay. All right. So when we talk about machine learning, basically it, it deals with um, working with 
first of all, you have data. Data as it comes in has hidden patterns in them. But as human beings, it's really hard to identify any pattern in any data sets. So for instance, take your school for an example. You have students from different backgrounds, different cities in Kenya coming in. Um, all of these students come in with certain grades in school, like from high school, coming to university, you get certain grades. There's probably a pattern between a, a pattern in the great students come in to the university with. So like what grade you get in from high school to the university and what you complete with. Mm -hmm. But if I give you a data set of everyone's grade and then what they graduated with, it will be very, very hard for you to be able to see any similarity, like any connection or hidden pattern that, okay, probably students who get A in their high school level automatically always graduate with maybe a first class. It will be very hard for you to see it just from the raw data I give to you. But with machine learning, you'll be able to pick this data set, learn the hidden patterns in the data set. And then if you want to come up with a model that will be able to make predictions in the future, as in be able to tell if a student comes in with an A, the student will graduate with this class then a machine learning model is going to help you do that. So machine learning helps you learn hidden patterns in data and then enable you to make predictions in the future without explicitly programming it again. So the example I gave was simple example, your grades and then what you graduate the university with. So you can think about it as having an input. The input in our case here refers to what your grades from high school. Now your grades from high school, we are going to use certain techniques to be able to extract features, important features. So features are things that can explain the phenomena for a particular um, um, situation. So you are able, you're going to be able to extract the features and then pass this through a model. These models are a lot, they are a whole lot. Once you get into the field, you learn more. You have linear regression models, which I know that those who are with statistics background are familiar with. You have logistics, you have decision trees, you have a neural network, a whole lot of them. So you would also still have to process to identify which particular model will be able to help you really learn the phenomenon for the particular situation you want to understand it, and then help you come up with an output. So that's how the entire machine learning process really works. And we have several types of machine learning, so but they are broadly classified um, into supervised, unsupervised, and reinforcement learning. So if I pick supervised learning, for example, first of all, supervised learning, you're dealing with label data. So back to the example I use about your grades and what your final class from the university is. This is an example of a label data. Why? Because you have an input. The input is the grades of students from high school. And what is your output? What are you interested to study? You want to be able to tell what a student's final grade is going to be. And that is an output. So once you have the inputs and the outputs in your data set, that is a typical example of a supervised learning. And under this, we have several algorithms. Then we come to unsupervised learning. And with unsupervised learning, I can decide that, okay, I want to really learn the pattern of students as in your, your university. How students from uh, 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 um, a particular city maybe um, act, maybe they probably um, like to dress in a certain way, or they love to go for, uh, they have certain attributes like going for clubbing or how they study or approach issues. With this, I don't have a specific label, but with the data set of characteristics of all students, where you're from, what you like to eat, wh whether you like to go out, out of campus, whether you, 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 you enjoy um, church service and all of that, I'm able to put you people in, you in clusters based on the data set that I have. In this case, I don't have a specific word output. And that case is a non-supervised learning. So with unsupervised learning, you are dealing with clustering them. So you can think about unsupervised learning like um, stratified sampling like you have like in statistics, with stratified sampling, you are dealing with people with certain characteristics being grouped together, or like you put them in certain groups, right? Not
attributes or similarities that they actually have. And that is what unsupervised learning. Then finally, we have the reinforcement learning. With reinforcement learning typically, I always love to use a very funny example with um, regards to maybe training a puppy, like the puppy doesn't really know that this is actually his or her name. So you, you want to let the puppy be able to learn and identify that this is actually their name. So what you do is that anytime you call the puppy by the name you've given it and the puppy comes around, you give it what? Maybe some uh, meat or maybe bones because they like bones, right? But since it's a puppy, maybe the best would be milk. You give it milk. Then anytime you call the puppy and the puppy doesn't respond, you don't give it anything. But when it responds, you give it what? Milk. With time, the puppy is going to learn that, oh, it looks like anytime I hear this name and I come forward, I get milk. So the puppy is learning from what? The actions and then what uh, um, awards it's receiving. And then with time, we improve such that whenever you now call it by its name, it would respond. So these are like the three main types of machine learning that we have. And then I mentioned that we have several algorithms and the, all these three types that I mentioned all have algorithms that fall under it. So I just highlighted a few of them. Linear regression is one, logistic is also another, but these two fall under supervised learning, whereas K-means falls under unsupervised learning algorithm. And these are stuff that you would learn as you get into the field as well. So this area is pretty, it's not totally young, but it's really, really growing. Like it's one of the fastest growing industries. And there are several jobs that you can get into with um, skills in AI or machine learning, right? And so these are some of the job profiles that I've mentioned. So you can become a robotics scientist. You can become a big data engineer. You can become a business intelligence developer. You can become a data scientist, a machine engineer, a product manager, or an AI research scientist. And this is what gets most people like interested because I mean, some people go to school, like of, if, of course we all go to school because we want to get comfortable at some point in time of our career. And so you want to know how much money we're actually talking about if you decide to pursue a career in this area. And so I decided to highlight the income of uh, um, jobs in this area. So for instance, big data engineer or an architect, the person can earn around $151,307 per annum. And this is a whole lot of money. Can you do the calculation and tell me if you are earning this in a year, how much are you earning in, in every, like every month? How much is that? Anyone to do the math? How much is this? If, if you earn this in, in a whole year, in a month, how much do you think you are earning in that sense? So, sorry? Anyone, anyone to do the math? $12,000. More than $12,000. $12,000, right, plus. So imagine convert this to Kenyan shillings and tell me how much you're going to earn in a month. How much is that? In Kenyan shillings? More than 1.2 million. So you see, so that tells you how much money actually you're going to earn in the whole month and how many jobs in Kenya will actually provide you that. So you can see that the, the, the area actually pays well as well. So you're going to, working in the area, aside being working on very interesting projects, you're also still going to really enjoy good money, right? And these are the jobs and then how much you can earn in the whole year. I think um, the free... This one is ending in some few minutes, right? Yeah, yes, yes. Okay, so maybe when it ends, then I'll join again. All right. <clears throat> so, okay, so I also highlighted companies that are also hiring according to Glassdoor. So we have Amazon, NVIDIA, Microsoft, IBM, Facebook, Intel, Google, Apple, Adobe, Uber, Miller. So you can check out this. Um, other um, companies do, most of them are hiring people in this area. So once you think that you have the talent, you have the right skills, you can try to begin looking at this area and see which ones you can actually apply to. 
And then we have several libraries that we also use for machine learning. And typically, I always go with Python. And I go with Python because I think it has really a large uh, um, support base. A lot of people use Python. And once you have any issue when you are using the, 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 the programming language, you can always write to people for help. And it makes it really user friendly. And aside that, it's really simple to learn as well. So I highlighted some of the libraries, most popular libraries. So we have NumPy, which is typically used when you're manipulating arrays and <laughs> working in the area of linear algebra. We also have Pandas, we use typically for working with um, data frames. So, and we have scikit-learn, and this one contains or supports most of the machine learning uh, models for either classification problems, regression, dimensionality reduction, et cetera. And we have Seaborn for um, visualization. So it's either Seaborn or Matplotly. People use this for visualization. We also have PyTorch, which is typically supported for deep learning frameworks or problems. So machine learning and that we still have like deep learning which uh, uh, most of these big companies actually use to build their models because of the complexity involved in it. And typically we'll be using like PyTorch. And then the math that we use for machine learning, so we can think about linear algebra and the linear algebra we have matrix and vectors, we have addition and scalar, multiplication of vectors and matrix, inverse and transpose. These are some I have just highlighted, but doesn't mean that the list, this is all that is on the list. We also have calculus, so you can think about derivatives, partial derivatives, Jacobian and Haitian matrices, and probability, you can think about the data distributions, conditional probability, maximum likelihood, base theorem, et cetera. So these are the areas that you probably, if you want to get into the area, you want to focus on getting um, good understanding so that you'll be able to what, optimize your models and everything. So there are several applications of the area. I've at least spoken a bit about how they, everything like stuff related to the area, the types and everything. So you can think about applications in the health, education, banking, and agriculture. They all use what AI and machine learning or companies who, who even fall under these sectors, which are not still using AI or machine learning are beginning to look at how they can adopt AI to their various activities. So um, the next part of what I wanted to do was to share tips that I think can also help in advancing your career. And um, I put them into three. The first is that you need to learn, grow and learn again. Even professors, people, emeritus professors, they still learn each and every day. And so at every point in time, the world is evolving so, so fast, especially even in this area. So the moment you learn one thing, in the next three, five years, a new thing comes and everyone is looking at it. So you should be able to uh, learn a new thing so that you can grow and learn again. Just keep doing that. Just keep learning. I mean, you, you just have to also create a niche for yourself. What are you really interested in? But learn towards that pattern. So if it is AI you're interested in, you follow the AI, AI career path, keep learning about the area and growing and learning again. And another important thing that I know most people find it very difficult to do is putting themselves out there. Some people, even when they even get a job or maybe after their master's degree, they some don't even have LinkedIn profiles. Some probably are not even on Twitter because they go like, I, I don't see the essence of being on LinkedIn. I don't see the essence of being on social media. But if you don't put yourself out there and then showcase your work, how are you going to get more opportunities? So I encourage you that whatever little work you do, no matter how little you think that is insignificant, show it out there. There's someone who will surely learn from what you put out there. Aside learning, you are going to also motivate someone out there as well, right? Because someone would see your post and be like, oh, Okay, if this person was able to do this, that means I can also do it as well. And aside that you're going to create lots of opportunities for yourself. And personally, I can attest to how often I have, gotten, I have gotten referrals. People invite you, okay, Deborah, I want you to come and give a keynote here. Deborah, I want you to come and talk here and all of that. And you are sharing your, your, your knowledge as well. But that's because I have put myself out there. I showcase what I do, no matter how little or insignificant it is, just be ready to do that. And finally, one important thing is network. 
funny enough, I got my job as a lecturer through networking. We went for an AIMS event and then I met my school president and I just approached him because I knew about him and the work he was doing. So I just approached him casually. Okay, my name is Deborah. I'm a student in African Masters in Machine Intelligence program. And I've read a lot about the work you do. And I'm really interested to go into lecturing to as well and share my knowledge and all of that. Before I could finish, he told me, oh, we are looking for people like you. So you sent me your CV, gave me his card. I took the card, sent him the CV. The next thing, he sent it to the Dean of Engineering, who later now called me for an interview. I did the entire process and I was selected. And there are lots of people that I can attest to how they have landed opportunities through networking. So it's really important that you network and you should not network with people you just think that they are at the top. Just among yourself, they ask you in there, as you're in there, just approach one or two people, talk to them, keep their contact and keep talking to each other. And when you meet new people, don't undermine anyone at all. Never. You never can know who is going to be what the key to your success or holds the key to your success. So ensure that you network wherever you go. Be nice to people. And it's really important. And if you also want to grow your tech skills, I know that since most of you have statistics background, you probably don't have any uh, skills in, in tech and maybe you're probably still interested to get into the area. So I would yes. recommend. Yep. Maybe. Yep. I, I'll be able to finish in the next two minutes because we have two Sorry? minutes for the session. Okay, sure. All right, I will finish up. So you should identify your preferred programming language. Should, so if it's Python, it's R, just identify it. Try to build your skills in that area. You should try to read the codes of others and read tech news as well, get informed. You can take online courses and know how to manage your time. This is really important. And there are several opportunities that are available. So of course, I'll recommend the African Institute for Mathematical Science, of which I know Elkana is there, can give you more information. The link is there as well. And um, we have the African Masters in Machine Intelligence Program, um, MSc uh, Machine Intelligence, and I'll put the link there. I'm happy to also provide more details on that. And we have the MasterCard Foundation and they have uh, partner universities in about, I think, 27 partner universities. So you can check the MasterCard Foundation and their uh, partner universities. So you apply to the partner university and concurrently apply for the MasterCard Foundation as well. And they can sponsor you for full scholarship. We have the Commonwealth, Chevening and Shun Belgia. So these are opportunities that are available. There are a lot more, but I just highlighted these. And uh, my final word is that you should never stop learning. You should surround yourself with positivity. This is really important. Don't surround yourself with people who tell you, oh, don't do this. This is not good for you. This wouldn't help you. Surround yourself with people who keep you going, keep you pushing, and learn to join community groups. So the group you have, keep it up ensure that you keep connected and grow as a community. It's really important. Enjoy more communities that do things that you're interested in. And finally, time management is really key. Try to manage your time as much as possible. And I want to say thanks so much for your attention. And you can reach me by email, dkanobala at amesarmy.org, or you can ask Elkana. You can also find me on any of my social media handles, whether it's like in um, Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. Just tell me that, okay, Deborah, I was part of the session that you came to talk in, in Kenya, and I would be happy to answer any questions you have. Thank you so much for your attention. And I know that I spoke pretty fast.